sorry. Hello. Um, Marie and I are doing another book. We just did Walter the Farting Dog 1. Now we're doing 2. Rough, we rough weather ahead. Thank you, John. Marie's going to read it, not me. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Welcome back to A Book or Two with You. Yes, Johnny's right. Rough weather ahead. For and, and if you know, then you have to go to Johnny Spooks to find the best quality, most quality Roblox videos. Yes, Johnny Spooks. That's Johnny Spooks. You can say to everybody, I, I know Johnny Spooks. I saw him on A Book or Two with you. Okay, here we go. Rough weather ahead for Walter the Farting Dog. For everybody who's ever felt misunderstood or misjudged. Professor Compressor knocked on the door. I understand your dog has a farting disorder. It's not a disorder, said Betty and Billy. Yes, it is, shouted Father. Come on in. There's Professor Compressor. Professor Compressor said, I've made a lifelong study of animal gas. He examined Walter, gently poking around his stomach. You better be careful, said Father. He farts when you do that. Oh, he won't fart at me, will you, Walter? What do you think, Lily? Yeah. <laughs> I think so, too. We've already read this book, but not on camera. Right. With my dad, which is behind the camera. Yes, he's the professional light person. Yeah, thank you, John. You're welcome, guys. Looking good. All right, so D Professor Compressor said, oh, he's not gonna fart at me. Walter farted. Professor Compressor staggered backward, waving his gas meter. 10.7, the highest I've ever recorded. What a remarkable animal. Walter was pleased to be called remarkable. He liked Professor Compressor and licked his hand. <laughs> I like Walter. You're a good dog, Walter, said Professor Compressor. And Walter's I'm cute. Walter. And the cat is also. Yeah, the cat's cute too. Walter and the cat are both cute. Did you know my favorite animal is a cat, not a dog? Oh. But my second favorite animal is a dog and then a guinea pig. Oh, cool. What's my friend has a guinea pig, no. Miles. Miles has a guinea pig? What's your favorite animal? Not you, then. You can leave it in the comments. Yeah, leave in the comments what's your favorite animal. Great idea, thanks, Johnny Spooks. Okay, you're a good dog, Professor Compressor said to Walter and I'm going to help you. He poked around some more. It's his digestion that causes such powerful farts. We don't mind, said Billy and Betty. Yes, we do, said Mother. Years of research have led me to this special formula, said Professor Compressor. Powders and potions appeared from his pockets. He plugged in a gleaming machine. Mix it in my Compressatron and serve it fresh three times a day. We're so grateful, said Mother. So three times a day, Mother mixed the special formula in the Compressatron. His farts aren't as bad, said Billy hopefully. They're worse than ever, said Father. Your father is right, said mother. That night, father decided to mix the formula himself. He examined the powders carefully. More of this, he decided, less of this, and a lot more of that. Father sniffed the new mixture and smiled. That's better. Tastes pretty good, said Walter to himself, and ate it faithfully every day. It's working, cried mother. The air smells so fresh. Hooray, said Betty. Walter was pleased too. Everyone was smiling. No one ran away when he came in the room. Father even hugged him. However, inside Walter, gas was building up slowly. <laughs> he 
Yep. Yeah. That's exactly it. That dog's getting fat, said Father. But it wasn't fat. It was farts waiting to be set free. Professor Compressor's mixture and Father's expert touch were turning Walter into a blimp. <laughs> Walter began taking strange little bounces when he walked across the room. One evening, he floated over Father's chair. Great jump, Walter, said Billy. But it wasn't a jump. It was gas. Floating like a balloon. The following evening, B Billy and Betty were in their room doing homework. Billy, said Betty, look outside. Betty and Billy raced out of the house. Walter was floating over the trees. Walter, come down, cried Betty. But Walter couldn't come down. Floated on into town. Quite a view, he said to himself. A breeze came up and blew him over to the other end of town. This is getting serious, said Walter. He knew the problem was gas. He knew the solution was farting. He squeezed, he pressed his belly with his paws, he twisted into a knot, nothing. He floated all night long. When morning came, he was high above the world. Mommy, said a little girl, look at that balloon. It's lost, said the girl's mother, it will never come back. There's the mommy and the little girl. Walter floated for days. He floated over green hills and blue rivers. He floated over skyscrapers and farms. He floated in the dark and the rain. He felt lonely and cold. He went whichever way the wind carried him. Suddenly the wind grew much stronger and he wasn't alone any longer. The air around him was filled with the flutter of tiny frozen wings. Millions of butterflies were caught in a freezing windstorm. They'd been on their way to their winter home when the storm took them by surprise. Poor butterflies, said Walter to himself. The wind was driving them down toward the frozen lake below. I've got to help them, thought Walter. He knew he had, him, had it in him. If he could just get it out, he grunted, he groaned, he pressed. He looked in their tiny insect Faces. It was now or never. He let it rip. <laughs> exactly. A blast of warm gas lifted the butterflies out of their dive. It melted the ice on their wings. It carried them to the far side of a mountain where the sun was shining. They touched down in a field of wildflowers. A forest ranger in his tower grabbed his two-way radio. I think those butterflies are going to be okay. There's where they touched down, the beautiful field. He let out an even massiver fart than before. Yeah, an even massiver fart than before. Out of gas, Walter went down like a rocket. He splashed into a pond and doggy paddled to the store. Shore, not the store, the shore. <laughs> he, he shook himself dry. Then he sniffed the air, turned around, and started the long walk home. He'd only gone a little way when the ranger pulled up in his Jeep. Can I give you a lift, Wonder Dog? Well, that was nice of that ranger. Somebody sent us a big package, said Mother, looking out the window. It's not a package, cried Billy, it's Walter. See, said Father, I told you he'd find his way home. Oh, Walter, said Betty, we're so glad you're back. Not half as glad as we are, said the delivery men.
Why were the delivery men so glad? I think it's because Walter was stinking him out. See, there's a little plug nose on. Yeah. Because the parts are so bad. Yeah, they've got little clothespins plugging their noses. We're kind of turning green. <clears throat> Walter Dog saves, or no, Wonder Dog. Wonder Dog saves Butterfly. Oh, everybody's celebrating Walter. Yay! And he's Walter. always farting like always. Yep, farting like always. Thank you, Johnny Spooks. Thank you for joining us for a book or two with you. If you'd like to have a copy of this book for yourself, you can go to the library or to a bookstore. We are going to read another one of these, but on a different video right yes. now. Uh, yes. Thank you. Bye, everybody. See you next time.